It's good to have you back. Happy New Year. It's become our custom together when we come back in the fall for a new school year or in the spring for a new year to spend some time listening to the windows in this room. M many of you know the story, but let me tell you if you don't. My predecessor, Herman Westmoreland, was the pastor of this church from 1938 to 1972. And part of the privilege of his tenure was to design the stained glass windows in this room. He made the upper windows so that they would walk us through the life and ministry of the Lord Christ. And the lower windows, beginning here in the front on the south side and working to the back of the room, to walk thematically through the Old Testament. And then beginning in the back and working their way to the front uh, on, the, on the north end to work thematically through the New Testament. And they are so beautiful and the story is so well told, it just seemed right a few years ago to walk through them together. But I was pretty convinced if we did it all at one time, what would happen is we'd, like a fire hose, not be able to take it all in. And so we developed this pattern, a panel in the fall, a panel in the spring. This is the third year of that. And so we are smack dab in the middle here on the north side. And today we're starting four weeks on the Pauline epistles. If you can't see the first one, we've printed it for you on the front cover of your worship guide. If you want to take a look at it there, it's a ship with the sails filled with the wind of the Spirit, taking the gospel out to places where it never has been before. It is a fitting image. The window is for the missionary epistles. Now, you've got to give me a moment for an aside here. Uh, one of the privileges of Dr. Westmoreland was to design the windows. The other was to make them fit within the space we had. And if you were to Google scholarship on the Pauline epistles, you will find nowhere in scholarship the epistles divide, di, di, uh, divided the way we do here. Uh, the first window there, the ship, is the missionary epistles. Next week we'll hear the pen and quill are the personal epistles. You will find a lot of scholarship about the lamb and the staff, the pastoral epistles or the prison gate, the prison epistles, but nobody divides them the way that Dr. Westmoreland did. He designed this schema to fit our room, which is fine, because what scholars do is design a schema to fit what's in their head. At least we were designing for a room where we're all together. But if you were going to Google later and couldn't find which one are we coming to next, that's why. So this week we're on the missionary epistles. And the picture is a ship the sails filled with the wind of the Spirit, taking the gospel out into new places. And I think that is a right image, both for us to hear on this first day of the year, and as we begin thinking about Paul. Because Paul described himself as a herald, as one who had been commissioned to take a message from the king out into the world. And if I were going to summarize the gospel for you into four words this day, the four words would be, you can begin again. You can begin again. Yesterday does not have to define tomorrow. The future can be different for you because of the grace of God we share in Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us from cover to cover the stories of lives that are utterly transformed by the presence of God and we're going to share several of them this morning. The message of the gospel is you can begin again fresh and clean and new. There is no sin you can commit that takes you fo so far that you cannot be saved from God. There's nothing that can happen in your life that puts you so far out there you cannot be redeemed by God. You can begin again. And that is a word that Paul offers to us in summary fashion in his second letter to the Corinthians. You've already turned there for the reading this day, but if you have a copy of the scripture, would you open there with me to 2 Corinthians? We'll be in chapter 5 and begin in verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16, where Paul writes to the church and says, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though formerly we, we regarded the king that way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, behold, new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us unto himself through the king and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
That God was reconciling the whole world unto himself through the king and has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of the king. As though God himself were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of the king, be reconciled to God. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for our sake, that we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you to not receive God's grace in vain. For God said, in the time of my favor, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. And I say, now is the time of God's favor. Today is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the scripture from cover to cover is, you can begin again. You can begin again after a broken heart. His name was Homer. His name was Hosea. And he turned out to be a prophet. His life's vocation did not begin that way. He married a woman. Her name was Gomer. And together they had a child, a son. They named him Jezreel. And then Gomer became unfaithful. She took on an occupation. They were the first dual income family in the scripture. It wasn't perfect. Uh, Gomer became a prostitute. She became pregnant through her actions. She had a child. And Hosea named that child Lo Ruchamah. It means I do not love you. And that was her name. And Gomer continued in her work and she became pregnant and had another child through her work. And Hosea named that child Lo Ami. It means you are not mine. And in that culture where infidelity was intolerated in no way, shape, or form, Gomer was taken and sold into slavery because of her sin. And Hosea was totally broken, humiliated in in, in public because of what his wife had done, uh, utterly broken because the one he loved had betrayed him so completely. But God came to Hosea and said to him, I want you to go to the slave auction. I want you to go where that woman Gomer is and I want you to buy her back from her slavery into which her sin has delivered her. And I want you to love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Hosea 3.1 I want you to go back to that girl that you named Lo Ruchama and I want you to give her a new name. I want you to tell her I love you. I want you to go to that boy that you said, you are not my own, and I want you to name him, you are my boy. See, this isn't just a story in the Bible. This is the story of our lives. God called Hosea to enact a parable on our behalf because we've rebelled against God. And the promise that God delivered through Hosea is that his love is so strong that if we are to follow after him, we are to take on his heart and God will give us the ability to forgive even the way that he has the ability to forgive. You can begin again, even after a broken heart. You can begin again. You can begin again even after you have broken your integrity. Maybe the most famous character in the Old Testament is King David. On two separate occasions, the scripture describes him as a man after God's own heart. That's not a phrase that the scripture chose to use of David because he was sinless. But because every time he sinned, he found a way to turn back toward the heart of God. Found a way to confess his sin and get right with God and start again. Maybe the most public implosion of a life ever recorded is in the pages of scripture. It starts so simply in 2 Samuel chapter 11. It was the springtime, the time of year when kings go off to war and David sent Joab and the army out, but he remained in Jerusalem and you know the story. David was restless. He got out of his bed. He was walking around on his balcony and he looked out and in there at a lower house there was a woman who was bathing and he wanted her and he sent for her and he had her and she became pregnant. Her name was Bathsheba. 